What's going on everybody? So you might be wondering what this mess is here in front of me and for those that are paying attention it should be pretty obvious but for those that are just curious let me fill you in. So in the previous video we were talking about how we ordered the CP3 and we went ahead and did in fact swap this. Um, for the new folks here this is a 2019 uh, CP4.2 that came out of my 19 uh, Cummins. Um, there's been some issues with those going out on all the brands, all the manufacturers. Um, however, uh, we're not going to focus on that right now. We're going to focus on why I have this out. So I wanted to make a quick video. Uh, I was really curious and some of the forum folks went ahead and asked if I could pull this thing apart and i uh, been happy to do so. But I was really curious to take a look at these um, rollers that operate on these springs as your lobe spins inside that creates your you know, your low and then high pressure fuel sides. So um, let's jump into this thing. So here's what we got. This will be a short video, but uh, we went ahead and went with the industrial CP3. I will do a uh, thoughts and I'll, I'll get a video of that in a next in the next upload. Um, but one thing that I wanted to do was take a look inside this thing and see how it worked. Uh, I really wanted to see where everything was kind of going wrong with these. And I'm going to show you a couple things um, on my... Uh, my little bench top here uh, of things that I did to take this thing apart. So standard hex heads, if you're interested in pulling yours apart, if you do a CP4 or a CP3 conversion and swap that out. Uh, but I wanted to show you a couple things here. One, first and foremost, I hope you can see down inside there. Let's come on, focus, 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 focus. It's really, there you kind of saw it. There is a lot of wear marks in there. Now, wear marks are inevitable. Anytime you have any kind of metal on metal, it requires the you know lubrication of the fuel and fuel additive to keep it happy, okay? So, I mean, whenever you have any kind of two um, hard metal or, or in this case, you know, kind of aluminum and steel uh, or steel uh, on top of each other, um, you're going to get marks. This truck had 21,000 miles when I pulled it out. There you go, there's another one. So you can see a lot of marks there and a lot of wearing. And something that's really, really interesting, at least to me, is kind of how these are kind of positioned in there and how these things work all together. So you have your lobes here that are timed. So this one is on the closest side of the block. Uh, this is on the um, outside of the block, closest to the driver fender. Um, and here's their corresponding lobes right here. So you got spring pressure on there, uh, your kind of uh, uh, guide pin uh, clocking mechanism. This one's left. Uh, you can kind of see it just rests on there, right? It doesn't necessarily even sit. And that's interesting that there's already kind of like a little bit of a rust bit showing there. But one thing that I want to show you is, is that, you know, to keep this video short, I wanted to show you that's kind of concerning. You hear that? The play in these, let's see if we can focus. The play in these allows this to move side to side quite a bit. Okay. Now, when these are pressed, when these are set in, you know, granted, you have your where your fuel rolls through. Um, where these where these are set, there's no real way to clock them in. Okay. Uh, so you're getting a little bit. You can have side to side. Uh, on top of your up and down compression with the lobe that's happening inside of there. And what you end up getting are some wear marks on this, and it's going to be hard to focus, I'm sorry. Now, these rollers are actually looking pretty good. There's a couple common spots. Now, I've run Hotshot Secret uh, or AMSOIL, um, both the everyday EDT, like everyday treatment, um, CTAM Booster, and uh, just recently LX4. Uh, and I'll continue to run those with the CP3. Uh, but what's really kind of worrying to me with these is that not only do they do that, right? Now this goes in this side. They, I, I can pull this in and out with my finger. So there's no way to clock these. So when these hit some sort of an abrasive inside your fuel, not only do they shift left and right, they're moving up and down, but if there's any, you know, and these came out really easily, right? So you're like, oh, they'll be held in by friction of the spring. There's quite a bit of play inside there, okay? And that's paint, so don't think, don't worry about that as I drop one. It's not going back in the truck anyway. But here's the other one I was going to show you. Not quite as much play. You know, 
maybe it's not even a sixteenth. It's it's very little, but it's enough. It's enough when you're rolling, you know, at you know twenty to twenty eight thousand psi. Um, and you know, to me, without having, does this have the? Yeah, it's got rust. A little bit of rust in it too, from these heads. This is where this one sits. And all that is is just that little retaining washer. Uh, doesn't look like it's clocked any particular way. Um, but that's really interesting, you know. Uh, wear marks for sure and blemishes on that. That's to be expected. Those are those are in intimate contact with that. Other than that, O-rings looked good. Everything looked good. The shaft looked good. There was no play. Here, we'll get the spinning here inside. See, there you go. There's that. Turning this here. And that's what essentially creates your your movement on both both sides, right? Um, the, uh, the mesh filter did not have any kind of mess in it, um, other than what I probably just put on it. Everything looked good in there. Um, O-ring looks solid. There was no, there was no issues, but there clearly was some scarring, uh, on that internal lobe. Uh, and there clearly was, uh, play on these, so... Um, if you have information on why you might want to design that in, I'd be curious to hear it. I understand that things should be able to move a little bit. I am concerned with the potential of rotation, uh, especially if there's any fuel contamination that could cause, I mean, if this thing turns sideways, that's, that's a bad day. And I think that's what you're seeing grenade on these things, to be honest with you. But, um, yeah, the manufacturing process on these is, is actually quite interesting. I would have, you know, I would have felt better if they had some sort of clocking on these or some sort of pin. Sorry for the blurriness. Sorry. But, uh, yeah, some sort of pin, something for this to kind of hold it in position. Um, but maybe you do want a little bit of rotation side to side. I don't know, but I feel like there would be ways to engineer that in. Anyways, this has been a seven and a half minute or so video. Um, but I was very curious to see how this thing worked. Um, what uh, goes into it again that's don't mind the white stuff there it's all paint uh catch the diesel um but uh oh, this little gear housing on the back too uh, you might be wondering what's in there those all looked really really good really happy um so no issues there not a whole lot of play in this um up down side to side but doing what it's supposed to so anyway, we're knocking on the door eight minutes it's long enough for your time but uh, i will have a video soon on the cp3 uh, and we'll probably go over just some some best practices some install and what tools i used to uh to help you guys out for the diyers out there or anybody that might hopefully need to use a reference but um you guys can do it i hope you guys have a great great day and uh thanks for watching